We have three companies presenting today, the first of which is Cowboy Clean Fuels. Uh, CEO Ryan Waddington is going to walk us through the story. Uh, so they are an innovative renewable natural gas company with operations in Wyoming. Based on technology derived from over a decade of research at the University of Wyoming, Cowboy has pioneered a patented technology to produce scalable carbon negative pipeline quality RNG from widely available biomass feedstock. Um, so looking forward to hearing more about that. Ryan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sorry to keep you waiting there. No problem at all. That was very interesting and, and a good segue to uh, what we're going to talk about. Well, feel free to take your full time. I mean, we can run a little bit over into the panels area. So, no so yeah, walk us through the story. Excited. Um, I didn't know that CBM could be used for this use. So really interested in learning more about that. Absolutely. Great. Um, yeah. So. Um, nice to be here. Appreciate the opportunity to present. So again, my name is Ryan Waddington. I'm a co-founder and the CEO of Cowboy Clean Fuels. As was mentioned, we're an emerging RNG company based in, in Denver. Of course, this presentation contains forward-looking statements, and it's not an offer to sell securities. So you're aware we're raising capital right now, and, and folks at Infor are helping us out. If you're interested, uh, feel free to reach out to them or, or me directly. So as mentioned, so we're commercializing a, a novel technology for the production of carbon negative renewable natural gas or renewable methane. So you kind of take what you just heard five minutes ago from, from Jennifer about how uh, renewable natural gas is, is produced with these big egg-shaped digesters on the surface and forget it. We're doing something uh, very different. Our process is patented, has 10 years of R&D and two successful field tests behind it. Essentially, the technology works by using coal seams as in-situ geobioreactors to convert biomass feedstocks into RNG and also CO2, and then to further capture and store that CO2 in those coal seams. It scales to a level that conventional RNG technologies can't achieve because we're able to leverage stranded and unproductive coal bed methane assets and infrastructure for our production capacity. We're merging what we, what we feel is the perfect time as the markets for both RNG and carbon credits, which is a second product and revenue stream for us have exploded and are continuing to grow. The opportunity for our first target area alone, which is in the, the Powder River Basin in Wyoming, is more than 50 BCF per year. Just at least in the U.S., the entire RNG production um, right now is about 50 BCF. So, so, you know, that gives you an idea of the scale. The current pricing, our first project, which represents just a fraction of the potential, both in the Powder River Basin, but also globally, could yield 25 million in EBITDA with, within three years and with minimal capex. is something that's also very different about what we're doing relative to traditional RNG. Our capex is very, very low, and it'll become clear as I talk more about what we're doing, why that is. We have a strong management team um, made up of experienced energy professionals with the right kind of mix of technical operation and entrepreneurial DNA. As I mentioned, we're in, we're in the final field testing phase of our technology and expect to begin commercial scale production later this year to enable us for raising a $10 million Series A financing. Once that is complete, we'll raise another 25 to $30 million for a full commercial rollout, either later this year or the beginning of next year. A little bit more on the team. So it's our core team is five people. It's very lean, including my co-founder, who's also our CTO and the inventor of the technology. He's a professor at the University of Wyoming. We have two experienced petroleum engineers uh, on the team. We also have several other experienced professionals committed to join as soon as we close the financing um, in key areas like uh, geology and operations, et cetera. So the technology essentially has application in coal seams, which have shown historical indication of secondary biogenic natural gas production, like the Powder River Basin. So what that means is there, were, you know, Jennifer talked about it. We think of natural gas as, as coming from rocks and you just drill and find it in certain Certain areas, the source of that natural gas or the methane was actually biogenic. So it, it came from bacteria essentially um, acting on a, a substrate in the Powder River Basin and some other coal bed methane uh, resources. The source of that methane was actually coal. So gas in the, as I mentioned, gas in the powder was produced by this, these bacteria, which are endemic to the coal seam, and they slowly break down the coal and metabolize it into methane and CO2. That happens really, really slowly. While most of the historic fossil gas that was produced this way has been produced, essentially it's gone, um, the microorganisms remain. So our technology utilizes those microorganisms to produce renewable gas by introducing a renewable biomass feedstock into the subsurface and making it available to the bugs to metabolize instead of coal, which they do at a much faster rate. So essentially, we get the microorganisms to change their diet from coal to a renewable biomass. As I mentioned before, the, the microorganisms actually produce CO2 and methane. It's the same thing that happens in 
surface level digesters and landfills, there's methane and CO2. But because of where we are operating um, in the subsurface and because of the natural affinity that coal has to absorb CO2, the carbon dioxide that's co-produced from the renewable biomass is sequestered and not produced at the surface. So this makes the process, again, which starts with the fixation of atmospheric CO2 into the biomass through photosynthesis, essentially a carbon negative process. Cowboy has exclusive access, access to three patents and one additional patent pending. The third patent on the list here is the one that's most operative. It was issued in uh, 2018, covers fundamentally the technology that I just described. Um, and it, it's, it's um, you know, covers key global markets where we'll go outside the US and North America um, in the future. The patents are the result of 15 plus years of R&D and over $6 million of non-dilutive research funding. Um, the research was led again by our CTO, Dr. Michael Urinowitz, who's a professor at the University of Wyoming, where he established the Center for Biogenic Natural Gas Research over a decade ago. Cowboy was launched earlier this year uh, to commercialize this technology and bring it to market. We've had about you know over 1,000 uh, laboratory experiments that were carried out um, starting in 2005. In 2018 and 19, that matured into the first field demonstration, which was completed at that time in 2020 and 2021. We did a second larger field demonstration to, to take it a little bit further. We call this second demonstration our phase 2A. Through this project, we're able to measure significant percentages of RNG in the produced gas. We also showed that the produced CO2 stays locked in the subsurface and we could transport fluids through the matrix. So, so here, again, we knew we were producing CO2 in the subsurface, um, but it wasn't produced at the wellhead, which is really important. And lastly, we, we demonstrated that we could differentiate the new renewable natural gas from the fossil coal bed methane via commercial and economic stable isotope method. This is really critical because we will continue to produce the old fossil gas along with the renewable gas, and we have to be able to differentiate uh, between them in order to take the renewable natural gas to the premium markets that are available to it, at least in the U.S. and increasingly in Canada and elsewhere. So just a little bit more on that technology. So the fossil CBM, this old, old gas, essentially has a different isotopic signature than the new gas. So carbon and hydrogen have different isotopes, um, and there's a different mix of those isotopes in any particular you know, sample of gas and uh, the, the fossil CBM has a different signature and we can analyze that very clearly and differentiate uh, the new gas from the old gas. Fundamentally, the phase 2A project proved the concept and validated the tremendous economic potential of the technology. It also set the stage for our final pre-commercial project, which we call phase 2B, which will start up later this year, again, supported by this current round of financing. And phase 2B will operate a five spot pattern to allow for continuous injection and gas production. In our previous demonstrations, we did single well injections and production from the same well. But when we get to a five spot pattern that gets us to continuous production, um, much like a surface level digester is a continuous operation process um, that will not only increase the scalability, but increase the economics. Important parameters like dilution ratio and loading rates will be defined and ultimately used for our full uh, commercial rollout starting later this year or early next. On the market side, you know we, we can sell our products into one or more uh, se of several compliance and voluntary markets for both renewable fuels and carbon credits. I've listed a few of them here. Initially, we'll pursue the US EPA's renewable fuel standard market. Um, and then on the carbon side, voluntary markets uh, for carbon credits driven by corporations. Other market options include some things that you've probably heard of, including the California Low Carbon Fuel Standard Program and, the, and the, the now a similar program in British Columbia. Um, we're not starting with those. They require you to essentially bundle your renewable fuel with your, with your carbon, uh, you know, carbon benefits. And we see a better opportunity by splitting them up and selling them into separate markets. The market for renewable natural gas today is small, and Jennifer talked about that as well. Um, primarily serving these niche transportation markets. So, so gas, as we talked about, you know, is, is used for a lot of things. Transportation is actually a small use for gas, but the market is growing fast and it, it has significant global potential. I completely agree with the discussion earlier about the importance of natural gas overall in our energy mix. We simply can't do without it, but we have to find a way uh, to make it cleaner. We believe that as supply grows, the RNG will begin to penetrate larger markets, including power production and home heating. Ultimately, the IEA estimates a potential market size of 30 TCF by 2040. 
On the carbon side, as the global energy system begins to transition as a result of climate change pressures, ESG and net zero commitments and a push towards general sustainability, the market for carbon credits and offsets is exploding. Although compliance markets for carbon are limited in North America, voluntary markets have grown quite a bit in recent years, and we expect them to continue to grow at high rates. Dozens of corporations, some of whom you see the logos on this page, are buying carbon credits today to help meet their ESG and net zero goals. Our first project will be in the Powder River Basin in, in Northeast Wyoming. The, the PRB has produced coal bed methane for 25 years, but is currently well down the decline curve overall. You can see that chart in the lower right. However, over $10 billion of infrastructure in, in assets, including eight to 10,000 wells and thousands of miles of gathering systems and pipelines remain in the basin, essentially as stranded assets. Cowboy can return the basin to economic production and bring new value to those old assets. We use multiple sources of, of our biomass feedstock to, to accomplish our goals, but we're starting with byproducts of the sugar beet refining process, including molasses. So sugar beets are an agricultural product that are produced all around where we are in, in Wyoming. Essentially, we're covered or you're, um, on three sides of Wyoming by sugar beet uh, production from Idaho all the way to North Dakota. So we can we have access to large volumes um, at relatively low cost and with short transportation uh, distances. We do need certain regulatory and other approvals to fully monetize our products, including an approved pathway from the US EPA and third-party verification for our carbon credits. These certifications and approvals are all currently in process. We don't have them as yet, but they're currently in process. We expect them to be received relatively soon. As I mentioned, our starting point is in the Powder River Basin. We have a, a, a acquired a group of 139 wells earlier this year. The wells were shut in for about two years and we'll, re, we'll in the process of returning them to production this year. And then over a period of about 18 months, we will roll out uh, the cowboy technology, um, essentially in a group of five wells at a time until we've, we've uh, transitioned them all. Because our multiple revenue streams, again, for both renewable natural gas and carbon credits and the premium pricing, premium pricing available for both of those products, we expect to achieve what's the equivalent of about $40 in MCF of gas produced, which is pretty significant relative to uh, today's market price for gas, which is high as it is. Um, but you can see the potential here. This translates to over $90 million in revenue per year and $25 million in EBITDA just on this first project. Um, and again, on very little limited CapEx. So if you saw a similar pro forma for a traditional RNG project, you'd see a very different profile, probably lower margins and much more significant uh, CapEx. And finally, because our gas is carbon negative with a CI score, that's a carbon intensity score of about minus 20, on our first project, we'll remove and sequester over a million tons of CO2 just over the first 10 years of operations. And we expect our projects to be able to run essentially uh, indefinitely, um, similar to, you know, again, a surface level digester. Uh, as long as you keep feeding it, it keeps producing gas. The same thing holds for us, including uh, the carbon sequestration part of it. Um, there's a thousand years plus potential to store CO2 in the coal seams of Wyoming. That's it. If you're interested in learning more about Cowboy, please contact us. We'd love to chat about it. And thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you very much, Ryan. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to walk us through the story. If anyone would like to be put in touch with management, feel free to reach out and we'll make sure that happens. Thanks for your Great. time. Thank you.